Lord, prepare us to receive your word, clear our minds and warm our hearts. Assure us of your loving purposes for us and speak into our lives today. Amen. <clears throat> our quiet moment with God today comes from Job chapter 13. If you'd like to open your Bible to this chapter and join me, you're welcome to do so. Look, my eye has seen all this. My ear has heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to argue my case with God. As for you, you whitewash with lies. All of you are worthless physicians. If you would only keep silent, that would be your wisdom. Hear now my reasoning, and listen to the pleadings of my heart lips. Will you speak falsely for God? And speak deceitfully for him? Will you show partiality towards him? Will you plead the case for God? Will it be well with you when he searches you out? Or can you deceive him? As one person deceives another. He will surely rebuke you. If in secret you show partiality. Will not his majesty terrify you? And the dread of him fall upon you? Your maxims are proverbs of ashes. Your defences are defences of clay. Let me have silence and I will speak. And let come on me what may. I will take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand. See, he will kill me, I have no hope. But I will defend my ways to his face. This will be my salvation that the godless shall not come before him. Listen carefully to my words, and let my declaration be in your ears. I have indeed prepared my case. I know what, that I shall be vindicated. Who is there that will contend with me? For then I would be silent and die. Only grant two things to me. Then I will not hide myself from your face. Withdraw your hand from me, and do not let dread of you terrify me. Then call and I will answer. Or let me speak and you reply to me. How many are my iniquities and my sins? Make me know my transgression and my sin. Why do you hide your face and count me as your enemy? Will you frighten a windblown leaf and pursue dry chaff? For you write bitter things against me and make me reap the iniquities of my youth. You put my feet in the stocks and watch all my paths. You set a bound to the soles of my feet. One wastes away like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten. Job's friends supposedly came to comfort him, but they haven't done anything to ease his pain. They seem to have lost sight of his suffering in their desire to win the theological argument at hand. Whether they can't or won't help, Job brands them as worthless physicians and turns his attention back to his appeal before God. Though he slay me, I will hope in him, Job declares in verse 15. What is the nature of this hope? It seems to be that Job trusts God to be just and confident that he is in the right, believes he will be acquitted. But in the meantime, whilst his friends can forget his suffering, Job cannot. It's worth reminding ourselves that Job is grieving, destitute and covered with loathsome sores from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Alongside his request for an answer from God, he pleads, Withdraw your hand far from me and let not dread of you terrify me. Comparing himself to a driven leaf and dry chaff he can't take much more. Will God really frighten and pursue someone so weak? The picture of God the Bible reveals shows that he does care for the weak and needy. Isaiah's prophecy in chapters 42 verse 3, which Jesus relates to himself in Matthew, says he will not break off a bent reed or put out a flickering lamp. Isaiah 40 31 says, But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. And 2 Peter 3.9 
makes it clear that God is not out to crush us. He is patient with you because he does not want anyone to be destroyed. Job's faith in God is not misplaced and neither is ours. We really can trust and hope in him. Let us pray. Thank you, God, that you love, redeem and restore broken people. I put my trust and hope in you. Fill me with your compassion for others and make me quick to offer real help and comfort to those in pain. Amen.